Hi, everybody. Welcome to Grab Your Keys. I'm very excited today. I've been waiting for this podcast for Angela Prophet to be on. She is a dynamic woman. Um, I've met her at the Entrepreneurs Organization. So if anyone doesn't know what the Entrepreneurs Organization is, it's the um, Entrepreneurs Organization, EO. And it's like-minded entrepreneurs that get together. There's criteria that you have to meet in order to be in the Entrepreneurs Organization. And it's a bunch of dynamic individuals and you really connect on a different level. So um, I got, I had the opportunity to meet or actually have a conversation with Angela. We're going to have her speak at one of our engagements that was postponed to next year. So I'm super excited about that. But Angela, tell us a little bit about what you do and how dynamic your business is. Um, there are so many, I could just dive into each one of them, but it's better if we actually hear it from you. Yeah. Well, first, Sue, thank you so much for having me. The moment that we chatted the very first time, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like she's like my long lost sister. I agree. <laughs> We just have so much in common and we had so much to talk about. And gosh, it's been, I've been an entrepreneur for over two decades now. My first business started in the wedding and event space and I started out as a wedding planner. My family had a venue for 35 years on the Gulf Coast. And so I just kind of like grew up around it. My uncle did it. And today I'm in like a flower store. It's like I'm always around like designers and doing like really fun, creative things. And, and also doing planning. And so when I started out just doing planning, that, that was great for a few years, but I had a real job. Like I worked at a hospital. <laughs> I went to school to be a psychologist and I worked as a therapist in a couple of different capacities in a morgue and an AIDS clinic. Um, I had some really unique jobs, but it all came really through relationships. But uh, as social media started to come out and Pinterest was born, I mean, we we used to do weddings and events for about 10 years without Pinterest. I know. I know. Really How'd that happen? Right? It's just things are so much better, like with technology. Um, but my business really grew and flourished as online presence came out and and just starting and doing like the planning and then the, the design. And then in 2010, our town completely flooded. And um, and at th that year was a significant year for me because I, I left my real job right. to do my my business. I had an opportunity to do a, a wedding for a singer who was on American Idol. Her name was Kelly Pickler. And I did her wedding on a private island. I didn't even know what a private island was. I didn't even know that stuff existed. <laughs> And then I found out and um, through relationships and did a did a wedding with her and, you know, it's featured in a lot of magazines and morning talk shows. And so things really started to take off for us there. Um, but that same year, our town flooded. And so from the internal, it was a real struggle for all of our vendors and all of our creative right. partners because we had a notebook for every single event, but I didn't. I had everything in the cloud because I learned EMR, electronic medical records through the hospital that, that there was this thing called the cloud coming and we could like push buttons and like things would happen with no paper. And so when I started the first company, I always remained paperless. And so when there is a struggle and there's a problem, as entrepreneurs, we swoop in and we fix things and we want to help people. And so that's what I... I started doing, I joined EO right after that. And uh, just some of the entrepreneurs in that organization really in, in the creative space, they're like, can you teach us what this drop thing is? And I'm like, Google Drive and Dropbox. I mean, this was way back when. And, uh, but it really sucks that it takes like a tragedy right. and for us to change, you know, as humans. But, but that's when I started a productivity company because of that. And then over the years, things just morphed naturally into doing speaking and traveling and being more of a consultant after you work 150 plus events every year for several years, you get tired. <laughs> and so, um, you know, everything is just morphed into to a need. And really during COVID, we had to pivot, you know, things were ripped out from under us, but we had other things like affiliate marketing. And I really dove headfirst into it with actually a lot of EO members who said, I want to write a book and I want to do a podcast and I want to do some of the things that you've done. Uh, with your personal brand to really support the company brand. And so we went down that road of helping people launch podcasts and get their social media going and, and really ended up being a, a specialized focused person in uh, Instagram and TikTok and movement and just being in that social media space and teaching people how to be human. And right. 
and we're all people and, and authentic and authentic. I think yeah. that it's very hard. I do a lot of social media. I think it's, it's very hard uh, to hit the uh, being authentic. And Absolutely. I see so many people who are trying too hard and yep. or not coming across as authentic. And it's really making that connection with someone else so that they don't, so that they have curiosity to ask another question. Right. Uh, and that's, that's difficult at times because you are working in the digital world, but like we work on, we're digital right now. And I feel like I'm having coffee with you. Yes. So it's really how you, how you support it and how, and you do a great job at that. You do a great job at developing the relationship. You are amazing on social media. And um, it's so funny because you have the job that out of college and during my entire life, I would, I would die to have oh. like weddings and planning things. And, and, and I love design. I was in uh, retail design prior to getting into mortgages. And what I love about being in the mortgage industry and having that creative mind, which is why I think I'm so successful and you're successful, is that you have the business mind and you have the creative mind. And when you join the two together, it's practically unstoppable as because you listen and then you solve. Yep. And that that's the thing. It's just it's constant solutions for uh, problems. You know, I had a branding coach once and he said, if someone asks you a question more than three times and they ask it the exact same way, you should do a video about it. And, um, you know, you should help people. I'm like, but everybody knows these things. My first viral video was uh, soaking 500 white washcloths from the Dollar Tree for an Indian wedding. I mean, this was when YouTube first started. Yeah. And he's like, what are you doing tonight? It's Friday night. I'm like, I'm soaking these washcloths in a tub and um, I'm going to like put like roll them up neat and slice cucumbers and, and stack them up and then put them in my freezer. And he's like, what for? I'm like, because I'm going to take them to the Indian wedding the next day because it's outdoors and it's August and it's hot and they're going to sweat. And then they're going to feel better if they just, you know, use that that ice cold cloth with that smells like cucumbers. And he's like, where do you come up with these things? <laughs> I'm like, well, like on a ship, you know, like when you go to a private Island and you get off, that's what they, and he was like, Angela, not everybody goes to a private Island. So don't right. say that. That's not relatable. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay. He's like, you have to be more aware that you're not relating to every day, you know? So it's like that, but that was the first point in time where I like really, you know, it woke me up and I'm like, wow, I'm in my robe, no makeup, my hair on top of my head, just making this silly video saying what I'm doing tomorrow. But so many planners saw it and they're like, this is a great idea. And I'm like, oh, so we take for granted, you know, our expertise, especially those of us who are creative. It just comes natural. But it's you don't not think natural. anything of it. You, you absolutely don't think anything of it. So what if you were to narrow it down? What do you think you, your three keys to success are? Oh my gosh. Well, so we have, we have something called the four P's, but the three P's that we can make the four P's. P's. We can make, what are your four? <laughs> here, I'll rephrase it. What are your four keys to success? <laughs> well, I was, you know, it's like, it, 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 it's, it, and I'm not trying to be cute because my last name is profit. Right. Um, when people are like, like money, I'm like, yes, but it has two F's as in fun and two T's as in time. So I'm going to give you double the fun, but give you double the time back. I love that. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, they, they remember it. But really the, the big keys is you got to have the right people. If you don't have the right people around you to support you and help you grow and help you grow the company and, and help you through the really good high times and help you through the really low bad times, um, you've got to find the right people. And that's where like, we use a psychology tool that I'm certified to teach. And that's how we hire everybody. And so having the right people. The second I, thing I, I was saying on that. Yeah. That, um, like sometimes you have the right people who are on the bus and as your company grows or as you grow, you, 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 those people change. How do you handle when having the right people don't stay the right people? Well, and, and sometimes everything has an expiration date, right. you know, it's true. And, um, 
And, you know, at times we think like, oh, we're not replaceable or nobody can do what we do. And and I really learned that um, starting out in, in wedding planning and getting into the luxury market and and where money is no object for they just want a certain look. They, they want a certain thing. And so um, when when you I'm, I'm totally going off on a tangent. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> So when, you know, that's, that's okay. We can, um, the right people, the right people, the right people. It, it's just, when you don't, you can just tell, you know, when you, when you don't, if you're going to pivot and you're going to move on, um, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Sometimes it's just time for people to go because, because they're growing. we have changes in life. Like I've, my first big, like hurtful where someone was leaving, um, was about six years in. And she said, I can't take this anymore. You do these huge, elaborate events. People spend more money in one day than I'm, I will make in the next five years. And she's like, and it's just uncomfortable. And I'm like, I am so sorry. You know, we're not right. for everyone. It's a market. I, I fully hear you. And, you know, she had a, a hard childhood and upbringing. I'm like, you've done so well for yourself. I never want you to come and work the weddings with us. And it make you feel degrading, which is what was happening. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, you have to take a step back and remove the emotions and think about the mental health, which for me is easy. Ha ha. Because I worked in a, a mental mm -hmm. hospital. I, That's I, your background. Right. I was in psychology and, and I, I don't have a whole lot of empathy, especially for excuses. Um, but I definitely you, you have to get with people on, on a human level, no matter if you're the president of the company and you're talking to, you know, someone that cleans the bathrooms. It's like sometimes as as entrepreneurs, we have to do all of those things. <laughs> you know, right. we, we're cleaning the commodes, holding someone's hair back while they're puking and then putting on the fancy dress and like running out in front of like cameras Absolutely. and stuff to talk. So it's like you've got to learn how to be a little crazy sometimes and pulling people into the crazy with you. They either have it or they don't. Right. But the key is, is just have it, which kind of goes into my next P is processes. If Probably. you don't have those processes, um, you're, there's so many things that can fall through the cracks and there's two really separate pieces. There's the internal processes and the external processes and looking at those from a psychology view and understanding what does my team need internally and then being a good leader and listening and flexing and changing um, or, or you're always the leader who's like, oh my God, I just went to this conference and there's these three new apps and I want to change it. And they're like, oh my God, seriously. Right. Um, so they keep me grounded. And, you know, I don't, I like to be just right there in it with them, but I, I had to learn and understand that if there is a broken process, they will tell you my team, but they're not going to fix it because that's not how their brain is wired. And, and you've got to get down and work with them sometimes and work through those processes to make them better. Um, and then the external processes, think about it. If there's confusion on the inside, do you not think that there's confusion on the outside coming right. from potential customers? <laughs> you know, so the, the processes is everything. And every time we break our process, which we do, I'm the worst offender sometimes for my friends and family, um, you know, it never ends up in our favor. So I have learned to take a step back and, and make sure that we are following the process. And I, I don't like to be in charge of anything anymore. <laughs> I'm like, go ask Amanda, go ask, you know, whoever is in charge of that, um, you know, and, and really allow those team members to own that and own that process. And, um, and then the third P is productivity. And it, that used to be all about software and automation because that's a lot of what I do now. I do a lot of strategy and, and whiteboarding out of how is the user experience going to be based on psychology for social media and for your content? And what it, is it, is it speaking to your website? Is your link tree, is it all connected, you know, psychologically to, to a human being? But what I realized is it's not about software. It's not about all the tools and the fancy chat bots and all the things. Um, it's really about you as a leader first. And, and you know my story, we talked about it. Um, I gained a hundred pounds over COVID. And, um, you know, it's a really hard time on so many levels, but I, uh, I almost died of COVID. <laughs> so, right. you know, it's like, you know, being out for 18 days and, and having brain damage and all these horrible things, um, you know, a lot of bad things happened during that time. Right. But when I walked, uh, when I was able to walk that and, and get out after 18 days, I'm like, I've got to move. My doctor's like, you're so unhealthy. You're overweight. You're a gymnast. You were a gymnast. You need, you know what you need to do. 
And I'm like, I need to move. So I got a treadmill desk and science says, data says, if you move 10,000 steps a day, you should be able to lose weight, maintain this, be healthy, all these things. And I'm like, no, I'll just try it for 90 days. And, um, and then I ended up having the opportunity to market a food group and really learn about, um, you know, what America is doing to our food, right. which is a whole other podcast. Um, and then we had some clients that we did some social media for that, um, you know, had an organic farm. And so I was able to be around all these things during during COVID and really learn uh, what was causing my food allergies, what was causing rashes, what was causing me to not lose weight, what was causing me to not be able to sleep, like all the things that you want to take all these pills for and eat all these gummies for or have surgery for. But it's like if you just do the work, the basic one thing a day and you follow it for a year. Uh, we do, we try to do too much, but if right. you are productive as a person, which means balance, which means sleep, which means work, which means family, which means me time, and you have that balance and you work towards it. And when you're productive, your whole team is much more productive. And I didn't ask any of my team members to get a treadmill desk, but they started to do it on their own because not that they needed to lose weight. Um, all of my girls are much younger than me <laughs> and much better. Um, then, you know, the older you get, you can't just eat all the sugar. You I know. I'm right there with you. But you feel like shit, you know? Yeah. So it's like just through my own, you know, and, and because of social media and things are very public now, I wasn't trying to start a business of losing weight and, and selling treadmill desks. That was never in the plan. But our whole P for productivity changed from implementing software to me going and speaking about very simple things, just movement yeah. and taking time for yourself. And, and what does that look like? And a lot of people talk about that, but no one talks about the how, like how the F do you do it? You know, no, and I mean, like, it's definitely hard. I've been on my own journey, which you, you know, we talked yeah. about and it's hard to make sure that I'm working out at the, you know, at the gym with the trainer three times a week, at least, and doing the other things on my own. And it takes, you know, a process and being productive yeah. with it and having, you know, having the determination for yourself. Like we put everyone else in, in front of ourselves sometimes and all the time. All the time. And I, I'm like, I, you gotta do, I'm a morning workout person. So I have to get up and I have to go work out and I have to do what I have to do. And uh, I feel better then. And, yeah. you know, you feel better then. And, we, but we have to do it for our me time. So Absolutely. I totally agree, agree with that, that. So people, process, productivity, what's the fourth? And profit with profit. one F and one T. If your business isn't making a profit and if you don't know your numbers, which I, I flew blind for 10 years before I got into you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Um, and, you know, it was like getting an MBA. But you've got to know your numbers. I'm not a numbers girl, so you can outsource it. But you got to know a little, a little bit to make sure that um, you are really – pricing things correctly. And, and, and you've got to be able to shift each year. Look at, look at your products and your services and what's going on in the market, because things are crazy right now um, on so many levels. Yeah. You've got to know, your numbers. Numbers. Got to know your numbers. So was, those, uh, those are the four. Yeah. There was an email that went or, or a uh, Facebook uh, question that went out with an EO member. And it said, what are the three things that a woman needs to be successful? Um, did you, I don't know if you saw it, but I put yeah. confidence, people and know your money. So I, I'm right there. I'm totally right there with you. If you are running a business, you have got to know your numbers. You've got to know. And even if you're any type of salesperson, you own the company or you don't own the company. Most salespeople are the CEOs of, of me Inc. So uh, they need to know their numbers. So people, process, productivity, and profit are your four. They're amazing keys to success. And uh, you definitely need to know them. Who in um, Angela's world or, or in the world, I mean, you're a, a world traveler, a world speaker, you're all over the place. I, I, I think I'm, I'm, you're amazing for everything that you do and all that you travel. But um, what, who do you admire? Honestly, 
I mean, I really admire my parents. I mean, my dad's in heaven. And, um, but my mother, like, she put up with so much shit. Like, yeah. my dad was an undercover cop and drug cop with um, the wow. railroad and was in undercover work for 30 years. And you don't really know how dangerous things are until you get older, you know? And then I go to call off to college and become friends with other people and go to their families' homes. And then I start doing weddings and working with all these families. And I'm like, my family is not normal. <laughs> Like we're yeah. not normal. I don't think anybody thinks their family is normal, <laughs> right? It's just it's I think so we're different. All different levels of dysfunction. We all do, but it's like it, it can be a beautiful thing, you know. We all come around, but it's like my mom. I mean, she's a stay-at-home mom, raised three kids. I was the oldest, and uh, and then my brother, who's six years younger, he owns a security company. So she's got the oldest kid and the youngest kid, who are both entrepreneurs. Um, and sometimes people just think we're crazy, but we're not going to settle. And that's the thing. It's like we truly want the best. And that's all my mom ever wanted. You know, she truly is like that little saint mother who like, I, I, I don't think she's ever said a cuss word. I mean, my dad, every other word, you know, it's like yeah. F this, GD that. And um, but, you know, they stuck together as a team. And I really, really admired that. I'm like, you know, I, I saw that things were so much more in life of just to be like a mom and a dad. Like you really have to work together as a team. And um, yeah, so my mom. Yeah, that's dad. awesome. Um, it, so how do you handle the balance of running a company, money companies, traveling so much, being on stage so much? How do you balance, you know, having me time for Angela? How do you balance everything in today's world? I color code my calendar, which is my process to control my ADD. So I don't have to, I'm not on drug, I don't take medicine for it, yeah. but I have to move and I have to work out. And um, I'm I'm pretty strict in, in uh, color coding my calendar and even like sleep because I travel in so many different time zones and I get sick if I don't sleep. Um, and people are like, you have to fly first class. I'm like, you go on 13 to 17 hour flights and in between countries and tell me like your sleep is the most important thing. It's priceless, <laughs> you know? So it's like, um, I really color code everything on my calendar and I outsource a lot. I, I really learned, um, you know, I'm, I'm the sales face of the, of, of a, a lot of the companies that, that I oversee and am part of and partners in. And so having the right people, training them and putting together processes. So it frees you up of control. And I actually don't want to have control. I never wanted to have control, but those of us are called to lead. Yeah. And, um, and we don't know how to back down and we don't know how to say no, because we know that there can be better. And, you know, that creates growth in us as, like as entrepreneurs. Yeah, I think that's your creativity also that you like things color coded because I am a color coder. I have my calendars color coded, my, you know, my outlook spreadsheet that I get on my desk every morning is color coded, everything's color coded. And I just really, I started that in the last year and it does, I can just look at it and know what my day is going to be. Is my day going to be high level payoff activities? Is my day going to be, what is my day going to look like? And I can see that by um, the color or what, or what I'm working on. Uh, so I love that that color coding, and I think it's really important. I, I love your process. What's in the future for Angela? Oh my gosh! Well, um, still just really well in the calendar thing. Going back to that, it's just uh, following my four P's and and my four colors. Like we plant, I say plant pots. You know, like put time in a pot. You plant something you know, to pot a seed, you water it, it grows. And so you have, you know, my personal time. And then I have my meetings where, you know, I'm in meetings and I'm doing consulting and I'm working with clients, but then you have a to-do list after you get out of those meetings usually. And so having a process for that and putting it on the calendar, that's what a lot of people miss. Um, and then having that family time and that friend time. And, and Andy Bailey taught me this, that you look Monday through Sunday and how many colors do you have? And he still teaches a program and he writes it all down. I do everything digital. Um, and that's where, you know, the power of being able to just look like you were saying that your Excel spreadsheet and see your week, but that, that is still uh, very much of what's next of just focusing on what is the, the passion. Um, you know, I don't want to do things just to do them anymore. I'm at the age where I'm like, you know, I don't, we don't need to do a hundred weddings a year <laughs> after COVID. We may do 10 a year and they're usually EO members or we know people, but working with people more in a focused relationship 
um, you know, for so many years, we've had clients, we do their weddings, then we do their baby showers, then we do their company picnics, and then we do the, some of their branding stuff or social media, you know, so it's like finding those life cycle clients and having a handful of those and really taking care of um, the quality is still what we're very focused on. For me, what's next, like we've been uh, having a lot of fun. I've been going all over the world, shooting behind the scenes for uh, design companies and hotels, resorts, and capturing social media and building internal teamwork so that the creators who are working inside of the hotels and the resorts and in these design studios, they're creatives. They right. they want to create content too, and some of them are already doing it. And so I go in and teach people, you know, just how to capture moments. And then if they have a bunch of cell phone footage, we share a folder with them. We edit their videos and put them on Reels and TikTok. So we're really focused on helping the companies be more uh, whole as a company culture and understand people, get with people on people level. And social media helps really do that in a beautiful way. And, and I love social media. Without social media, so do I. I have all these connections. Yeah. So I, I, love, I it. love it. And everyone, I, that's actually what I'm speaking on at Nerve is yes. uh, being the social media mayor of your market. And mm -hmm. I'm like super excited about it. And I, when you love it, it shows you know, it shows that you don't mind. And it's, it's exactly what you said with the cucumbers and having your hair and, you know, up and, and, you know, but no makeup on and just telling people what you're doing. And I'm like, if I'm going to, I'm going to make people understand the mortgage business, or I'm going to make people, I'm going to make fun of something that just happened, or I'm going to answer a question that I got asked three, you know, three times today. Uh, because if everyone asks it and what, and does it really make a difference? We're all human. So let people see the real side of you. And I love the hotels and stuff. I'm going to have to follow you more. Um, but I love everything that you're doing. And I'm so glad that you got to share some time with us today, Angela. Someday I'm going to be able to have a conversation in person with you with a glass of wine. And yes. we'll probably like have so much to chat about um, because I just know that you're like a sister from another life. So yes. Um, I can't wait. I know. I, I was I was like, I have to ask her if she's going to the Tampa, but here's the thing. We will get together and thank yes. you so much for being on Grab Your Keys. You gave us so many great keys today. And if people, if you like this podcast and Angela, use her. We'll have a link to all your different companies and your social media on this and um like it everyone share it and as i keep on saying we have amazing speakers for the rest of the year and i can't wait to share everyone's keys so grab your keys everybody and i'll see you later have a great day